stolen from you shall be restored in this season in the name of jesus father the bible said the earth is of the lord and fullness thereof and everything in it lord father everything in this art belongs to you lord we pray right now you begin to touch the heart of people that are holding our blessing in the name of jesus father restore somebody here restore somebody with power restore father i pray for everyone in this house today that you will not leave this house untouched the lord Lord Almighty we touch your life the Lord Almighty we touch your family the Lord Almighty we touch your your career the Lord Almighty we touch your academic work in the name of Jesus we pray this morning that the Lord Almighty we carry your burden in the eagle's wings father you say you are the Lord arise on the wings of the wings to help us you are the God of Jeshurun who rise on the wings to help us so lord we pray right now by the power of the almighty that you are right about hilly sita that you come down to the church this morning send your angels oh father to bring our packages lord send your angels father to bring all that belongs to us in the name of jesus oh father the years the canker won't have stolen you will restore father restore this church father restore the members of the church restore our children restore our business restore our soul that the enemy have stolen in the name of jesus father anyone here that the enemy have touched his or her soul father we take that soul back father we take that soul back that soul will not, will not be lost father that woman and that man will not be lost oh god we believe your power we believe in your power to rescue your people rescue somebody right now in the pit of hell in the name of jesus is there anyone in the pit of miss rescue such a one in the name of jesus the earth is of the lord and fullness thereof for a cause things to happen for us this day in the name of jesus right now even as we share the way father i pray that you will speak to us speak to me lord and to everyone here like never before in the name of jesus father we have come to mountain of transfiguration let somebody transfigure today let somebody be transformed today let somebody change today in the name of jesus oh lord our god we break every cloud in the air we break demonic cloud break in the name of jesus we break every hindrance in the air break in the name of jesus we close every sickness in the air in the name of jesus we close every grave the enemy has dug for your people grave we close it in the name of jesus spirit of accident we cut it off in the name of jesus spirit of confusion we silence it in the name of jesus father the bible says at the mention of the name of jesus every nail should bow knees of confusion knees of luck everything that is working against us against our head against our children against our loved ones father let them bow spirit of unforgiveness we command it to bow unforgiveness in the heart of men bow whatever that is robbing us from your glory we demand the battle this morning in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Oh, glory be to God. This morning, we, we want to, let's quickly look and show you the scripture before um, Ezekiel 3, verse 22. What I want to share this morning is what the, I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to hear. It's called Save to Save Others. Save, saved to save others. I am saved to save others. So that is what we want to share this morning. Ezekiel three verse 22 now this is not a scripture we but I just want to show quickly show something before I go into the message is it get 322 because sometimes we don't know why we come to church 
you probably would have been in your house this morning, in your bedroom, have a lot of sleep, amen, but you push yourself to come here this morning. God said to Ezekiel, say, then the hand of the Lord was on me, you can put your name, was on Prince, and he said to me, get up, get up, get out to the plane. Before you get that, you have to what? Get up, amen. He said what? Get up, get out to the plane. And now we what? Speak with you there. Get up, get out to the plane. Go to church, go to King's Mercy Church. And I will speak to you there. Amen. Could you imagine yourself going to a place God wants to speak to you, hello? And you start like, not, you know, maybe you're not listening or concentrating. Oftentimes people come to church, now two hours, they go home without getting anything because they are not listening. Even though God wants to speak to them. Anytime you come to a place such as this, God wants to speak to you. So what you have to do is to um, just concentrate. Forget about whatever you're going through. Don't find fault. Hello? Say, Lord, speak to me, and God will. It doesn't matter where you're sitting or who's sitting close to you. It's all about you and God. So this morning, I believe God wants to speak. Amen? If you use other, other translation, the Bible says, Ezekiel, go to the plane and I will talk to you. I will talk to you. So this morning, I want to talk. Maybe in this season, I'll just do more of teaching. I want to talk. And please open your heart because God wants you to speak to you. Amen? Amen. Now, if I may ask, what does the, why does the church exist? What is the purpose of the church? Hello? Why does the church exist? <laughs> Can anybody help me? Why does the church exist? Why do we do church? Yes, sister. Place to worship God and congregate to strengthen your spirituality. Okay. To congregate and strengthen our spirituality. Sister. Because Jesus always worshipped in the Father's house. Okay. Okay, cool. Then why, why did Jesus come? In our question. Pardon? A sin. Praise God. Praise God. A severe was done in, 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 in U.S. by a consultant called um, Win Ann. She asked the same question. She asked people, why does the church exist? About 89% responded that the church exists to take care of them and their needs. To take care of them and their family. 89% of folks, especially Christians, believe that the church exists to make them feel great. Amen. So if their family cry, you go in there and say, don't cry, don't cry. Hello, somebody. You're not even smiling. You're pretending. <laughs> if any, you know, if they have a little, little problem, go there, oh, don't, God cares for you. That is the only reason most people believe that the church exists. But it's more than that. The primary purpose of the church exists is what we're really going to share today, why Jesus came. If you quickly turn to the book, the book of um, of um, of John three sixteen. Let's quickly look at look at John. We all know that scripture. It says, that "For God so loved who the way that He gave what His only begotten Son, that whosoever that believe in Him will not perish." John three sixteen. We will not perish, but we have what everlasting life. God so loved the world that He sent what His only begotten Son. That whosoever that believe in him will not perish. If you look at the book of Luke, Luke 19:10, the Bible says Jesus Christ came to seek. Luke 19:10, He came to seek and to save that which was lost. The Lord, He came to do what? To seek one. Seek meaning looking for people to save. Meaning He was Jesus Christ when He came, He wasn't lazy. He was always going and looking for somebody to take care of. The Lord came to what? Shall we read? For the Son of Man is come to what? To seek and to save that which was lost. That is why he found me. The Lord, he came, his ultimate desire when he was here and even now is to save souls. Save the dying souls. Amen? And he did it. Came to seek and to save. It means God has also called you to seek and to save. Hello somebody. First Timothy, sorry, 1.15. 115, he said, Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. 
sure. This is this is what this this saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save the righteous. Hello, he came to save what sinners. And I am the worst of them. He's saying, though he was the worst of them, Jesus did say, Jesus Christ did not say, look, you are too sinful. I'm not going to save you. Hello. I heard a guy sometime preaching in, you know, or maybe was he com commenting in the television. He said in America, most blacks, they look at themselves and say, you are too black. <laughs> you know, they say, some black people, they are the worst enemy to themselves, you know, most are black American. He said, but white folks never say to their fellow whites that you're too white. Hello, somebody. Maybe I'm too black to some of you here, somebody. <laughs> you know, so Jesus Christ, he did not say to Paul, look, you're too sinful. I'm not going to save you. A lot of time when you see people come to the house of God, some people will tell me, you know, I don't want to come to church, you know, because I'm too sinful. I said to them, when you are sick, do you stay at home? If you're really sick, I, see, I, ask, I, I normally ask people, what was, what, what was the hospital meant for? Say to heal people, to help cure people. Then if you're sick, where do you go? You go to middle more, to super clinic. Because it's what, it, 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 super clinic was bad, bad for sinners. I mean, for, 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 for <laughs> sorry about it. <laughs> for sick folks. It was not bad for those that, if you're healthy, you will never go to super clinic. I was talking to one doctor the other day. He told me, he, was talk, he told me, oh, I said, I've been in Korea. We're talking about Korea. So I have two Korean um, clients. He said, but they are not good clients. I said, why? He said, they never get sick. He sees them, you know, maybe once in three years. <laughs> So, you, we never go to hospital if you are well. Hello. The reason you came here this morning is because you're a sinner. Oh, you're not talking to me right now. <laughs> the reason you came here this morning, actually, is not because you're righteous. If you're righteous, you don't need me to be here. This shot is made for sinners. And thank God I'm one of them. <laughs> if you're righteous, you don't need to come here. So, Jesus actually came for people that I miss. For people that have lost hope. For people that have no one to care for them. As a matter of fact, some of you remember the story of Luke and of uh, Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. Some of you know the story of Zacchaeus. Hello. I can tell you the story or we can quickly read it. I have a lot of scriptures to show you. I'm just beginning, please, because we're not going on time today. 3 o'clock. Just to go, get ready. 3 o'clock. <laughs> Then write the scriptures down. It says, he entered Jericho and was passing through. He was passing through. This guy heard about him. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief test word, collector. And he was rich. He was rich because he was extorting people's money. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But he was not able to, to able because of the crowd since he was short man. Maybe I, I may be taller than him. If I'm taller than you, you're in trouble. <laughs> so running ahead, he climbed up a side camel trail to see Jesus since he was about to pass that way. He just wanted to have a glimpse of Jesus. I've heard so much about him. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry, calm down, because today I must stay at your house. Watch this. This guy wanted to have a glimpse of Jesus, but Jesus could not avoid passing, avoid passing him by. Some of us, we have seen us all living around us. We don't even care about them. We think we have nothing to do with them. But Jesus Christ ate with sinners. Lord, no, ha, you know, had rapport with sinners, have not with sinners. Allah, he did not run away from them, but he did not become them. Because some of you, in seven sinners, you become like them. One of the guys I went to Bible school with from Congo. And um, at the time, he started going to club. I said, why are you going to club? He said, he was going to save sinners. I said, don't, say, don't go into the club to save them. Wait for them outside the club. <laughs> I won him several times. He got angry. And I leave him. It wasn't long. He started clubbing. <laughs> Honestly. And he, he, a few times, I invited him in a church in Korea to minister. And one day, one of our church members saw him around in that area and said, What are you doing here? I think you're a pastor. He said, I'm not a pastor. He denied Christ right in there. I warned him, said, Don't go there. Hello? So you don't have to, you know, entangle yourself in what unbelievers do, but you have to associate with them in order to win them. You can never win people from outside, you win from inside. 
No war has ever been solved with gum. Amen? A lot. But at, every, at the end of the day, if, if you see nations that are warring, they will always come at what? Meeting table. A lot. Conference table. One of the ways to win sinners is not to run away from them, but to come close to them and see how you can bring them to Jesus Christ. A lot. Hello, somebody. So Jesus Christ went to his son Zacchaeus, who was there and said, I just want to have it if I can just see him alone. Jesus Christ was going somewhere Hello, He had probably an appointment, but he stopped for Zacchaeus. Hello? He said, Zacchaeus, come down from today. I'm going to eat with you. Hello? And look at it. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. Man, go, go on, brother. Oh, who saw it began to what? Complain. He, he, he's gone to lord with what a sinful man this is religious mindset hello there's so many people that are too religious hello they don't want to do it differently but Zacchaeus stood there and said to the lord look i give half of my possession to the poor lord and if i have a instruction in any in anything from anyone i will pay back four times as much most of those folks around him that were you know con condemning him did not even know that zacchaeus wanted to change his life oftentimes you don't even know that people are getting ready to transform and you're just thinking that they are still the same soul you used to know yesterday i may have done what you said i did yesterday but i'm not what i used to be i'm not talking to somebody right now i don't i'm talking to somebody you may have done what people say you did but you are not what you did and you are not what you used to be you are in the process of changing so we should be able to recognize when people want to change and help them to change don't always respond to people the same way you've always known them hello something may have happened on their way amen in their life on their way to damascus hello somebody some of you probably may not they, probably we're not even planning to be in this church ever but somehow on your way to damascus god corner you into this place and today you are still here we celebrate you somebody in the name of jesus you know so sometimes god bring you into a place to change you so you know one of the worst things that will happen to you is to you know is family that people are called familiar spirit people who know you before will never believe in you and if you have people who will not believe in you no matter what you do you need to disassociate you know? change your crowd look for people who will believe in you who will believe in who you are God is doing a new thing in your life now if people want to judge you because of your past just change your crowd and look for people that will accept you the way you are so Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners it was at this point he made this statement in verse 10. Then he said, today salvation has come to this house. Jesus told him because he too is son of Abraham. Hallelujah. He said, look at you know, Zacchaeus. He said, today salvation has come. A day comes in your life when salvation comes. Salvation come knocking. Salvation is not only repenting. There are about two or three words for salvation. Hello? Salvation also means deliverance. Jesus Christ did not only save him from his sin and the extortion of money from people, but Jesus Christ delivered his sicknesses in his heart, delivered him from curses. He said today salvation, a holistic salvation came into his life because Jesus visited him. I see Jesus visiting in you in the name of Jesus Christ and they came comes in your life no matter what you're going through or what you've gone through salvation will just come visiting you hello somebody Jesus said today what the boy was night today salvation has come into this house Amen. deliverance healing power prosperity hello has come into this house today may be your day in the name of Jesus today may be your day so we need to understand that Jesus Christ came to save in, in, in Matthew 9 35 the Bible says he went around was healing diseases preaching the gospel and healing all that was sick of the devil hello he went around healing people hello somebody he went around in, in, in then Jesus went to all the towns and villages doing what teaching in their synagogue he went around teaching preaching the good news the gospel is called good news the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness Amen. he went around teaching people sharing with them the gospel of salvation Amen. how many people have you shared the gospel with this since this year 
Have you ever talked to your co-workers? Some of you, God put you in that place not just, for, not just for you to make money. God put you in that place to be an you know, undercover agent. Agent of Jesus Christ to share the word of God. Why is it that we have empty chairs in the church? But every Friday if you come here, you will see that there's a club up there. I don't know if some of you have been there before. If you've been there, please raise up your hand. Praise God. Those. <laughs> <laughs> so every Friday, you see there, they, you see a lot of cardiacs crowded all over. What are they doing? They are clubbing. And the kingdom of, of hell is getting populated. But the kingdom of God is getting scanty. It's becoming scanty. You are sitting in a chair right now, very close to a chair that no one is sitting on. Why is it scanty? Because you are, everybody leaves the job for Pastor Prince to go and win this and bring them into the church. It should be Pastor doing that is his job. But God has called you to win souls. Our life is it's not just to make money. If you're on earth just to make money, then forget about you are wasting your life. Hello? You must make a choice. If you're here to go spend your life, invest your life. Hello? Are you just spending your life, wasting your life, or investing your life? So many people spend their life. So many invest their life in the kingdom. And so many waste their life. Hello, somebody. Hello? You must make a choice. Why are you here? Jesus came to win souls. Is it your master? Is Jesus your master? Hello, somebody. Is Jesus Christ your master? Amen. The Bible says, servant is not what? That he was master. Why is it that our master came preaching and healing? But we, we are all about, what we think about is making money. Hello? And taking care of our family. We don't want to talk to anybody. But your master came healing, teaching, reaching out to people. If the, Jesus is your master, then we must do like a master. Hello? We must do like our master. Now, if you quickly, as we proceed, I'll show you a few scriptures, still more. You see, I believe he, Jesus was passionate about seven sinners. That is why he sent even his disciples. If you look at the book of Luke, chapter 10, 1 to 3, you'll find out that he sent his disciples in twos, about 70 disciples, to go and preach. You know, sometime before Jesus Christ would go to any city, he would dispatch his disciples to go and start interceding. See, if you watch, after this, shall we read, after this, the Lord appointed 70 others, and he sent them ahead of him in pace to every town and place where he himself was about to go. He will be, he, Jesus, if he wants to, for example, go to Jerusalem or to Galilee, he will dispatch his disciples first to go and start telling the ground, start interceding, start praying, praise God, so that when they get there, the work will be fruitful. Hello, somebody. Verse 2, verse 2, he told them the harvest is what? Abandoned. Amen? But the workers are few, only the leaders. Say, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. Hello, then in verse 3, in verse three said, now go, I am sending you out like what lambs among wolves. He was not only going to cities and teaching and preaching and healing people, but he sent his disciples. Hello somebody. He sent out his disciples to go and do the same thing he was doing. Hello. Hello. Then in verse 10, 17 and 20, that's the revelation. I want to show you something They're very strong. 17 and 20. Please. He said, The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. What is He said to go and preach, intercede, and win souls. He also empowered them to heal the disease. Praise God. Cast that demon. Are we here, God's people? Amen. But when they came back, they did not report of all the souls that was won. Hello? They say, you know what? We did miracle. They did not tell Jesus. We, also, we even won souls, you know? But they talk about the visible thing they saw. You know, sometimes you pray for people and ask them to receive Jesus. And they just receive Jesus. You're thinking that nothing has happened to them. But somehow, God has changed their heart. You may not see it. You may not even be thinking about it. But if you pray in the name of Jesus, demon, come out. And if the demon come out and say, man, I'm powerful. <laughs> You know, I know sometimes when I listen to myself and the man I say, Man, I'm shouting too much. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes I listen after pray after church. When I pray, when I get home and listen to my video, man, I say I'm too noisy. 
praise, praise God. So when they came, instead of reporting of all the souls that was one, they reported of the miracle. Then verse 20. Yes. Hello, listen. However, don't rejoice. Jesus said to them, however, don't rejoice that the spirit has submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven because you want souls. Amen. Jesus said, look, forget about the miracle. He said, the main deal is in winning soul. Say, rejoice because you have won soul. <laughs> Hello. So there is something about winning people to Jesus Christ. That is why Paul says, I'm not afraid of gospel of salvation. Hello. He said, I am not ashamed of the of gospel of salvation. Romans 1 verse 16. For it is power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is power of God unto what salvation. The gospel is power. Hello. When you preach the gospel, people will come to Jesus Christ. Hello. You may not know, but you just tell them that Jesus loved them. I was in Mangrove some time ago, and I was evangelizing in Mangrove um, Park, Park and Save about four years ago. Over, and I saw this man. I gave him trust and said, Jesus love you. He was on, the, you know, he was walking, he was on the run. I gave him trust that Jesus love you. He took the trust, was still going. He came back to me again and said, For a long time, no one has told me that Jesus loved me. So I haven't heard that for a long time. Hello? So people are waiting for you, they want to hear from you. Hello? Can you just affirm people and tell them how much God cared for them? Hello, somebody. Jesus said, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. The Bible says in, in book of Proverbs 11, verse 30, 30 B, it says that he that win a soul is wise. Right. Proverbs 11, verse 30 B, it says he that wins souls are wise. wise. If you win soul, it means if you aren't winning soul, what happens? Please, you go to KGV, you scared KGV, this scripture, you know, a bit more to let this verse. It says, he that wins soul is wise. Shall we read it? The fruit of the righteous is what? A tree of life. The fruit of righteous. And, and that, and that winner's soul is what? Wise. And now if it says, he that wins soul is wise. In other words, if you haven't won a soul before, you are what? Unwise. <laughs> You don't want to use the word, just because they thank you, thank you, you're so real, so real. <laughs> it means the opposite of not being wise is foolish. So if <laughs> you're trying to be kind, brother, <laughs> it's a, he that wins soul is wise. If you have not won a soul before, you know, in your lifetime, then you must be the foolish one here, praise God, hallelujah. Hello. So we need to reach out to people. I said, matter of fact, the Bible says, how beautiful. Romans, Romans 10, verse 15. How beautiful it is, amen, for those, he said, for the feet of those that, that, that preach the gospel. And how shall they preach unless they be sent? I said, this is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that what preach the gospel of peace. So my feet is beautiful, praise God. Anytime I walk into your house, I come with a beautiful feet. <laughs> That is what the Bible says, amen? Praise God, that's why I pray to God. And bring what? Glad tidings of all good things. How beautiful. You see, when you pray to God, anytime I go to the street and minister to people, I feel like Jesus. I feel so fresh in this. I feel happy and joyful that I'm able to do what Jesus is doing. Hello? Then the 12 verse 3, it says, um, it says and, they that we, they, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of what? Firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as they start forever and ever. The, those who turn many to righteousness will shine as the stars, meaning, even if they die, they will still be living. Amen. Meaning, no matter what they are going through, they will shine, they will rise up. If you win so for Jesus, you are investing in kingdom cover. Hello, if you win souls. Have passion to win souls. Hello, somebody. Don't wait until somebody tell you, you know what? Go to the street, talk to your neighbor, talk to your friends, tell them about Jesus Christ. No, go out and win souls. Tell people about God. How is it that if, when Michael Jackson died, we all know that he died? Hello? If you ask it, you know, almost 85% of, 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 of the world population who is Michael Jackson, they will tell you. They knew the day he died. How comes many people around the world do not know that Jesus Christ, hello, have died and have risen? Hello? 
And lost him, but how it comes. Sometimes, you know, we, it's, it's, I read a book the other day, and the man was saying about 1,000 tribes and races around the world have not heard God, the gospel of, of salvation, not even for once. You know, you know, there are a lot of tribes and races. They are called, you know, for, you know, is it 1040 window? Hello? The unrich people. So about 1,000 tribes, you know, of, of, you know, in every country you have tribe and races have not heard the gospel of the kingdom of God. And we are still there enjoying ourselves. If we don't have a job, we just complain, God, he didn't give me a job. Hello, somebody. But there are so many people in China, in Vietnam, in Cuba, hello, in North Korea. They, you know, they don't even care if they eat or not. They just want to preach the gospel. And they are being persecuted unnecessarily because of their faith. But we're living in a free world, hello. Everything you have, electric city, have all that you need. And we are still complaining, have telephone. When people came to Africa, the first guy that came to Africa was called Dr. Livingstone. In fact, people told that he was dead. Where they were, New, mo, mo, most of New York Times, they were looking for him because he was one of the missionaries, the last two years. Many European missionaries, they were dying because at that time, Af there was no ma malaria vaccine. So if they go to Africa, they normally go with their, with their coffin. They go there to Africa. They stay there maybe one year or six months, they will die. The living ones will write to Europe and say, the missionaries, they have all died. Send more missionaries. At that time, the church was not a, you know, a, a, a egocentric church. Hello? The church was more of a sacrificial church. Today, we, live, we come to church because we want God to bless our pocket. We want God to give up job. We want God to bless our marriage. Hello, somebody. And if all this is, if you're not being blessed in these areas, you get mad. God, God haven't blessed your pocket. Because most people that preach the gospel in the past, they were so sacrificial. They were not thinking of what they will get, but they were thinking of what, what they, were always, they were always thinking of what they will give. Kennedy said, do not think of what America will do for you, but think in what you will do for America. We come to church, we expect to receive. Hello? If nobody makes us feel good, we get angry. Hello, somebody. Because some of us come to church with the mindset, you want somebody to make you feel great. Who makes me feel great? If I don't make you feel great, you get angry. But how many of you make me feel great, somebody? <laughs> oh, nobody's talking to me right now. Because the pastor is getting into that area, he becomes something else. He's, he's becoming something else. So if somebody do not make you feel great, you get mad. So Christianity is about making you feel great, making you feel, you know, loving. And if nobody cares, but, mm, the church people are mean. Hello, are you here? For you to feel great every Sunday or to receive the word and run with the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. Many if missionaries, European missionaries that came to Africa, if they did not come to Africa, I will not be here today preaching the gospel. The sacrifice came to our continent and helped me to know that Jesus is Lord. I probably will be bowing down to wood now or to tree. Hello? Or more than image, but somebody sacrificed. Some of them give their one dollar, their two dollar, their three dollar, and send missionaries to Africa. They were coming with their coffin, and they came after six months, they died. They were still coming to help you know God. That is sacrificial Christianity. Amen. All we hear today is about prosperity gospel. I believe in prosperity, by the way, because if you give me a million dollars right now, I'm gonna jump up, but I will still preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. But if we're thinking of receiving and receiving and not giving, we are in trouble. If your life is about receiving money to make money to make money, some of you, you just want to make money. Why do you want to make money? Why do you want God to bless you? Do you think of, oh, God, if you give me, oh, $10, I'm going to give you $1. I'm going to help preach the gospel. There are a lot that need to be done around the world with money. I lost somebody, but you are making money, putting it in your pocket. If you come here today and immediately you come, we'll all be outside and we say, oh, sorry, we're not able to pay the rent and, um, and they have locked this place. Will you be happy? You will not be happy. Some of you will pastor, why didn't you tell us? But how will I tell you? The Lord have told you, give your tithe. And some of you still do not believe. Tell us somebody. Still do not believe. Even I said to my wife many some years ago, I said, even if I do not believe in tithing, <laughs> even if tithing is not in the Bible, I will do it because the church pays the rent. Amen. See, the, go, go to grocery store, you see sick place, very big building, bought by sick. Or they build better place. These guys, they pour money 
look at look at uh, in, uh, in Muslim Islamic religion. He says they sponsor religion. Saudi Arabia is pouring so much money buying, buying lands in the in the US in the UK in France. They are buying the places. Churches are going empty, and they, you know and the Islams are buying. The Muslims are buying. It's been said that many years from, from yes from, in the next twenty years France might be an Islamic country. You know, they are buying you know churches turn it into mosque. And we Christians, we don't want to give. We think it's not good to give. Hello, somebody. For me, I believe it's easy. When you think that way, it's deception. So if, you're, if you are not thinking properly, and if you don't give to the kingdom of God, then I don't know why you're making money. Hello? If you have a kingdom mind, Amen. God will not struggle to bless you. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. I believe the kingdom is not all about... It's not all about asking God to bless you with a good head and to protect your children. It's sacrificial. Do you know how much I've sacrificed? God knows. I can, I've given my life for this ministry. Amen. I'm not telling you, I'm not making it sound good. Go ask my wife in private. I have given, I've neglected so many things. I've given my life. How many are we? But I've given my life. Hello. I've sacrificed for how many years I've been ministering, but since I've been ministering for how many years, I will not say I've received anything full salary for how many years? For about 15 years now. Hello. I will not say I have received full salary. I've sacrificed a lot. I'm not doing it because I want to come and preach every Sunday, but because I'm convinced that this is the right thing to do. Hello. Don't wait for somebody. When I came to this country, I went to the street. I, Mama Rosie, you're my witness. The church I used to worship, none of them told me. The pastor, I went there the first Sunday and looked at the place. I felt that these chairs are empty. I need to go to the street. Hello? I went to the street. When I went to the first Nigeria that started coming to that church was Brother Joe. Some of you know Joe. I met him in Mangre where I was sharing the gospel. Hello? I was doing that. Nobody asked me. I asked the pastor, Do you have trucks? He said, Yes. I went to the street, but I was doing it. Do, I was doing that. Um, there was a day I was going every day, and the time I started going on Saturday, the first day I went to the street, I won so. I met a lady three weeks ago. She said she was thinking of me. I said, What happened? She said that when I met you in this country about six years ago, she said, I met you in the street. So I was thinking of going to the street. Then I remember you. Hello. God told me when I came to this country, I was on fire, I came to preach the gospel. But when I came, everything was totally different from where I was coming from. Then God said to me, don't wait for the pulpit. Hello, go to the street. Amen. Amen. I went to the, that was a convention. I started going, I asked the pastor, I was asking for flight. I can't, maybe I've given up to 10,000 flyers in this city. Amen. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I probably have given up to 10,000. I was going to the street. I was there was no these days. If you don't give people people, they say, oh, but if you want to pray, go to the street. Hello. It, when I was with that pastor, no day did I ask him, Pastor, I want to preach. Nobody have done that here. We have a very disciplined leaders. But no day. Hello. I sometimes preach like once in two, two times in a year. But I don't care. My spirit say go to the street. That is where the main deal is. We need to go. If you want, the, if you come here, there is nobody in the church. Don't complain. You have a responsibility, you have a duty, you know? It, it is your duty for, uh, uh, for, for, for you to reach out, to bring people into the church, tell them about Jesus Christ. Hello? Maybe I'm making somebody sleep this morning, brother. Is anybody sleeping? Is anybody sleeping? Hello, somebody. Maybe I have to jump up before you will understand what I'm talking about. Hello, somebody. So we need to do what Richard did. Did you remember that when Jesus Christ resurrected, hello, when he resurrected, the first thing he did, John 20 verse 21, the first thing he did, hello, he sent them while he was still on earth, when he was alive, you know, walking on the surface of the earth, he sent his disciples. When he also, when they crucified him and he resurrected, he still sent them again. Because that was his dream was his mission. What did he do? And when he resurrected, look at what he did. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I sent you. Amen. As my Father hath sent me. I mean, he said, even so, uh, did Jesus said, I sent you to go and do business. I love somebody. I'm not against business because we need great businessmen to run this church. We need people to do business and make money, bring it to the church. Hello, somebody. Amen. One pastor said, 
one lady come to her and say she has got a business IQ and she really wants to do business. And the pastor said, okay, I have, I have anointing of prosperity. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to make money. But he said, when you make money, you make the money, but I spend the money. <laughs> he said, the lady said, yes, she will make the money. And the pastor will spend the money for the gospel. They entered into agreement. The pastor prayed. And this lady, you know, started doing well. But she was pregnant. All of a sudden, she went to the hospital. I'm still coming back to this scripture. To give birth. And she passed away. So when she passed away, they called the pastor, Pastor Yinka Yusuf, and said, this lady is dead. She said, no, she cannot die because she's owing her money. She's holding her money. <laughs> she said, no, she cannot die because she ha- she's, she's holding her money. And she got there. The doctor said, you the husband, so sorry she's dead. He said, no, she's holding, she's owing me, she can't die. <laughs> and he went there and cried to God. And crying, say, Come back, you're not dying because you have not finished what God has called you to do. Amen. He said, Come back, you will not die. And he laid hand on him, pa! And the lady started, you know, he, you know, started coughing or whatever and came back to life. Amen. I said, Pastor, what happened? He said, They say you have died, but I say you have not died because you owe him my money. <laughs> Receive, brother. Amen. He said, You owe him my money. Amen. You see, when you have that kind of mindset, you will not die. The Bible said we will not die, but rather live and do what? Proclaim the goodness of God. I will not die. Anytime when we hear of that scripture in the book of Psalms, you know, Psalm 119, verse 17, you know, some of us we claim that scripture. I will not die, but live and proclaim the goodness of God. But that scripture is for people that work for God. Hello? That scripture is for people, Psalms 119 verse 17 says, I will not die, but rather live to proclaim the goodness of God. How do you proclaim? Is this Psalms 119 verse 17? Okay, please go to 118. Let's see that scripture. Seventeen, Verse 17. Okay, shall we read? I will not die, but I will live. And do what? What? I will not die, but I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. Some people say, some translation in Ivy said, I will live to proclaim the goodness of God. So, when I look at that scripture, those who are qualified to claim the promises in this scripture are men and women that are ready to do, to proclaim the goodness of God. You may not be able to go to China to preach the gospel, to go to North Korea, but you can pray for people that are there. Hello? You may not be able to go to Philippines to do crusade, but you can give money. Hello? You may not be able to do fasting every weekend or carry over and stand on the guard for church, but you can support people that are doing it. Hello? This is how you can proclaim the goodness of God. Hello? Some of you, nobody ever asked the pastor if he is. But if, I, if you come here this Sunday, I say, oh, oh, hi guys, you know, I was hungry all through the week and um, because I'm hungry, I'm not able to prepare the sermon. Please, let's go home today. You will say, what, 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 what is he talking about? Hello, somebody. But we don't even think about it. Hello? Don't wait until I become too rich before you start blessing me. Oh, nobody's talking to me right now. Nobody, don't wait until I become too rich. Because I may not be taking your money when I get there. I know God is going to bless me. I don't know about you. I'm talking about myself. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We need to start supporting what God is doing. Now. This is the time to stand for God. Do you know when Jesus Christ, I'll just show you a scripture when he, when he rose up. He, he break on his disciples and say, go out there and pray the gospel. As somebody concluding, please stay with me. But do you realize also in, 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 in Matthew, we saw the same scripture, Matthew 18, verse 28. Matthew 18, verse 28. When Jesus, that scripture translated, when, when he resurrected, he told his disciples to go to Galilee. A lot. No, no, Matthew, okay, please can we read them? Um, 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 when, uh, I'm fine. Oh no, sorry, go to 28, sorry brother. 28, let's read from 16. Matthew 28, let's read from 16. 
Now, when Jesus Christ, you know, was, you know, crucified, he told his disciples before then, he said, please, go to, if this, this happened, after this, go to Galilee, and there you will meet me. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus Christ had appointed them. Well, Galilee at that time is, is the dwellings of most Palestinians. More Jews were not used to living in Galilee. A lot, and some most Jewish folks at that time they resent people from the from the Palestine. The law somebody, the original, you know, the uh, mo, most mo, those that are not, you know, original Jews were the Palestinians at that time living in Galilee. That is like their oasis, a lot of residence. So Jesus Christ told his disciples, said, after I have, you know, I have crucified, I will resurrect, but go there and wait for me. There you will see me. Jesus wanted them to be able to meet unbelievers. Hello, somebody. Move on to verse 17. To verse 17. It said, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Hello? Keep on going. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and what? And art. Keep on going. He said, Go. Shall we all on, look at the main scripture here? Please, everybody, read with me. Go ye, therefore, and teach what all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Hello. He said, Go ye. It was all about going. You know, in, Matt, in, in, in John, we saw him preaching on them, say, receive ye the Holy Ghost, and then go out and preach the gospel. In Matthew, we also saw him telling, telling them to go out, go out and disciple nation. That was the heartbeat of God. That was the desire of God. Hello, somebody. His greatest desire was to make sure that people hear the gospel. Hello. Do you ever open your mouth and tell people that Jesus loved them? Hello. Have you ever tell your friends, those are your friends you laugh ha 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 with. Hello. You are not meant to be laughing just ha ha ha. Hello, somebody. You are meant to share the gospel with them. Hello. You are an agent, undercover agent in the hand of the Lord. God wants to use you. Stop spending your time unnecessarily. One of my, you know, Dean in the Bible school, she's it's an American lady, very old lady, but she loves winning souls. She said anytime she wants to fly, she will pray and say, Father, help me to sit close to an unbeliever. To encourage people so that I can share the gospel. Amen. Hello. Sometimes we want all believe. Some of us that are in the kingdom, we don't want people that are not saved to come close to us because you are too saved to sit close to sinners. Hello, somebody. Amen. Some of you are too saved and saved and saved again, born again, born again. Hello, somebody. So you don't want to associate with the sinners. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go and start making out there with people and drinking with them, smoking with them, hobnobbing with them, a lot partying with them. That's not what I, I'm trying to encourage you. But I say, you, the reason you must associate to unbelievers, to church folks, is to help them know the Lord Jesus Christ. You are an agent. You are FBI on a, an undercover. You are God's seer on earth. Am I talking to somebody? That is who you are. Nations around the world, they have their secret agents. Hello, an agent can come into the church, worship here for 10 years. You will not even know they are on a mission, undercover agents. Hello, you are God's own KJB on earth. So you need to go out there, pretend, and as if you are just coming for friendship, and then win them for Jesus Christ. That is why you are lying. If you're able to win a soul this year, then you are successful. Hello, somebody. If you are able to win a, a soul this year, then you are successful. But if you make a million dollars this year and you are not able to inculcate the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in the hearts of people, then you are a failure. A successful man are not men with millions of dollars. Successful men are people that, are, that have been able to change and transform life. Think of transforming your generation. Think of transforming your community. Think of transforming people around you. What is that in your heart? Are you trying to impart your word? I said to my wife, I just have a burden to write books. I just want to write books and write books. I'm still asking God to give me the time. There are some of them that are on, are on the making right now. But I, because I said to my wife, any day I leave this earth, hello, if I just preach and go, people will not even remember my sermon. Because there will be a new preacher, great fellow preachers. They will say those ones are better than me. Praise God. But if I have like books, I may not get into people's bedroom, but that book will be in their bedroom. Am I talking to somebody? 
for years, after 10 years, 20 years, their great grandchildren will read it. That is impact. Life is about impact. Life is about transformation. Life is about changing people. Life is not about feeling great you know, on a daily basis. People are always complaining. You know, people that do not have so transforming mind, they easily throw in the towel. They easily give up because they are not thinking of winning souls. Hello? If you're too busy with God, you can't be complaining because Pastor Prince didn't tell you the way you want it to be. He's not too political correct. Today he speak rudely to me. I'm not going to go to that church again. The church become Pastor Prince church because you are, you most of us have a kind of mindset. You want me to pamper you and make you feel great. You want people who will tell you like, sometimes you need things that will touch your body and pain your body. You feel that this is the word of God. You are not looking for entertainment church. Too many churches today are, they, they, they're all about entertainment. They go to the church of 25,000, 25,000 from year to year. You will not hear altar call. You will, if you see a pastor who don't make altar call from year to year, they do not have a kingdom mind. Hello, somebody. 2009 is one of the years I felt I was more fruitful because I was able to travel out to some place around the world. And I caught, like in the Philippines, there was a night many people came, about 1,000 people came to Otako. Hello, came to Otako. And some of them, I had one to one talk with few people, you know. And after I adopted a daughter in Philippines, we tried to help her slow steady from here. Hello, but I was when I called them to for altar call, they, she was there, she was 13 years then, and she was crying and crying. And I called her up to the stage. I said, How do you feel? She said, I feel great, I feel good. She was still crying, and uh, I just feel like she doesn't have a father. I said, Do you have a father? She said, No. I said, Okay, from today, I'm gonna be helping you. I'm gonna adopt, adopt you as a daughter. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we've been doing that a little, not been much, but we've been trying to give her the little we can. Hello, somebody. Hello, but, but I saw her there. She was crying. If I hadn't gone to Philippines, hello, if people had not, we raised about thirty thousand dollars to do for that project in Philippines, in India, and in Korea. We will, people gave that money to transform life, and many lives changed in that because of that. Because somebody helped. So life is about changing. So if you have not transformed somebody's life, then you are wasting your your life. On earth. Hello. Don't come to do church here, folks. Come to change life. Amen. Don't come here just to feel good. Think of who to change. Think of who to bring to church next Sunday. How many are we here, man? Maybe if you can't have, if we are 50 here, for example, today, or less or more, if we are, then if every one of us, you know, look out for somebody, and just this year, say, I'm going to talk to this lady. I'm going to talk to this, my coworker. I'm going to help her to know God. And you speak to them. You, you know, if everyone, within one year, we can double this church, hello, by winning people. Amen. Every one of us can think of somebody to bring to Jesus Christ. Hello, don't come to feel good. This is not a place of feeling good. You need to think of reaching out. I'll show you this scripture and I will close with this. The book of, I have still a lot, but I will not continue. Book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel 33. 33, okay, just let's read from 3, let's read 3.16. Is it 3.16 to 20? Please, I want us to read this scripture. Did I saw this scripture? I cried all through. Many years ago, I saw this scripture. Is it, shall we all read together? And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, Prince, saying, move on, he said, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. I've made you a workman in New Zealand. Please just, I want us to focus. This is very important scripture. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Wait on me. Hear the word from my mouth. And give them warning from me. Give them warning. Like I'm sharing today. Say, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from this wicked way. No, from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Did you hear it? Did you see the scripture? Did I, I got to know the scripture? I cried all through many years ago. Probably out of 2004, no, 1994, 1993 or 5. You know, it's, now move on brother. Move on. He said, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness. 
nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Why this? It means if there's a sin, you have a sinful brother, sister, friend, or neighbor. If you tell them that look, what you're doing is not right. If they continue to do to work on their ways, you have nothing to lose. Hello, your your you know, his blood will not be on your head. But if you don't do anything, the person will die in his sin, but his blood will be on your head. Hello, then we reach. Okay, move on, brother. I stand to say again. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, maybe you're a church folk, you go to church, you love God, and all of a sudden he turn away, hello, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling blow before him, he shall die. Even though he was righteous in the past, but if he but least, the Bible says he will, he will die. Because thou hast not what given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. Hello? No matter all the good he has done in the past, if he but sleeps, his righteousness will not be remembered. But his blood we I require at thy hand. Move on, brother, verse 21, the last scripture. So nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin, sin not. It, 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 nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Friends, if you see sinful people, I always, if I find a way to talk to people, I may say, you know, you know, you need to love God. You no, know, God loves you. I find way, my, in any way I can to speak to people. If I find, if I have my, I have a way to do that, I will always make sure. There was a time when I came to this country, I was not like, I was not used to like going to community meeting and stuff like that. Even when I was in Korea, but um, and they were inviting me to a community meeting to come and to come. I wasn't going. And one day the Lord said to me, you were a preacher. He said, these are the people you came for. They may not like you. They may not believe in you. They may not even like your face. He said, but who are you going to preach for? You don't need to be far from your community. Hello? Hello, somebody. And I, any time I have in a private time with people from my community, I always try to chip in something. Because I know I'm a watchman. They may not even know. Hello, because if you, if you read the Bible, you find out that even in the time of old, God will always send people to Ezai, his sons. Ezekiel was a prophet of, of the Ezai's. You know, he went to Ezai, to Babylon, to minister to them. Hello, somebody. Hello. Amen. He, because some, some people, especially, you know, if I don't like to this word foreigner, some sojourners, we are all sojourners. Hello, though they are natives in the land, but we are all sojourners. So those who come to sojourn here, sometimes they think if they see like I'm from Africa, some of my African brothers, we do respect to all Africans here. If they see like people who came, a minister that came from outside to do ministry, they were thinking, why didn't you stay in our country? Should I, that's a great place to do ministry. Like you're here for money. Hello? Hello somebody. Most of us think that way, that when God sent a minister to a foreign nation to minister to his people, you think that the minister is there for money. And I don't know where I keep that money. Hello. Hello, somebody. Amen. God sent me here to minister to somebody. Amen. We are a voice. We are watchmen. Hello. We are trumpeters. God, even you, wherever you are, God wants you to trumpet the sound. His sound. Hello. Blow your trumpet to your husband, to your children, to your wife. Hello. To your friend. Tell them about Jesus. If you have done that, if they die, they will die in their sin. But God would have delivered your hand, washed you, you know, their blood from your hands. You are responsible to people who died without Jesus, yet you know them. I went to my, one of my neighbors there, I'm done now, of my Israel, he's a Hindu guy. So I went to him the other day, I said to him, I gave him a book, one of the books I've written. And I said to him, um, I want you to read this book. He said, you know, I got my God. I, you know, if you come to my room, I worship my God every day. I have God's there. He's a Hindu guy. I said, I said, I said to him, our God is in heaven. Our God is not in wood. It's not in molten image. I said, he said, okay, I even have Jesus in the house. He said, come, come. I wonder, I will take you to my bedroom. I will tell me which one is Jesus. <laughs> I said to him, our God is a living God. I said, okay, read this book. 
He said, okay, I will read this book. And after some weeks, ask me what I read. And I will tell you. I said, okay, read. This is the way I'm trying to communicate. I keep on inviting. He said, no, I'm busy on Sunday. I'm busy on Sunday. Reach out to people. Do your job. And God, we know you've done your best. Amen. Hello. Today you're here. Are you here to feel good to, for somebody to make you feel good? No. You're here to know the truth. Son of man, go to Keda and I will speak to you. This morning you may not have heard a big voice from heaven. Tall says the Lord, Pastor Pierre, go to the King's mercy. You may not have heard that voice. But the, the reason God woke you up this morning, probably stay up your spirit to come here, is because he wants to speak to you. Hello. And God, if you were listening, then God has spoken. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand up and give him praise? Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Let's cry to Jesus right now. Let's cry out to him. Let's cry out to him. Oh, glory be to God. Cry out to him. Let's repent in his presence. Let's repent in his presence. Let's repent in his presence. All glory to God. Let's repent in his presence. Oh, Rabba Bashaka. Oh, Rabba Chalabro Shara. Oh, Rachebra Shelebo. Kendrumo Shiri. Peter Kreshu. Brando Kubrande Kreshu. Helebondo Kuzarabahaya. Somebody give him praise. Let's repent before him. Let's repent before him. Let's repent before God. Oh, glory be to God. Torah of Abashan. Let's repent before God. Father, we repent. Father, we repent. Father, we repent. Father, we repent. Father, we repent, Lord, of our teaching. We repent, Father, for our teaching toward you. Torah of Abashan. Oh, Father, touch our heart, Lord. Touch our heart, Lord. Father, touch our heart in the name of Jesus. Father, touch our heart in the name of Jesus. Somebody cry out to God. Cry out to God. Father, touch our hearts in the name of Jesus. Oh, love and kill him, O Sir. Oh, love and sex, brother. Bakuru Ziri Kaba. Kebron Zinder and Emosha. Father, touch our hearts. We repent, O Lord. We repent, O Lord. We repent, O Lord. We repent, O Lord. We repent, Father. Koro Shah. Somebody repent. Make God a promise today. Repent of being too calm. Of being too lukewarm. Ask God to forgive you of lukewarmness. Not being able to reach out. Not being able to be a voice for him. Ask God for forgiveness today. For forgive the church. Forgive us, Lord, from our sin, from our weaknesses, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, forgive us, Father. We ask you today, my Father, in the name of Jesus.
a church of the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Do not be ashamed, come out and we will just pray for you. We will ask God to empower you. You don't want to hide under the table anymore. You want to use every opportunity, every opportunity to share the gospel. <laughs> come up, we will just pray for you. If you want to make a commitment, it's not forced. But if you feel that the Lord is telling you to make a commitment, to preach the gospel. We just pray, ask God to empower you. Just come out. You don't want to keep your mouth shut. You just want to find a way to talk to friends, to wear wishes. You want to ask God, say, Father, I want to receive power today. Empower me. The floor is still open. This might be one of your greatest days. Might be one of the greatest day in your life to make a commitment and say, Father. We, I want to preach for you instead of the devil. I want to talk for you rather than the devil. This might be an appointed day for you. Say, Father, use me in every new can cranny. All we want to do is just to pray for you and ask God to quicken you wherever you find yourself to share the gospel. We want to ask God to quicken you. The floor is still open. The Lord may be telling you, two or three persons here say, you need to be there. 
Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Just come. Come. Make a commitment to God. I say, Father, I want to do something for you. I want to preach for you. I want to share the word. Thank you. let you know that Jesus is here and he knows you're here this morning. You're not here because of human compassion. You want to make a commitment that only him sees. He knows what is in your heart. And uh, he is going to recognize this commitment you're making today. And he will stamp it in the book of life. I want to please repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving me save others. Lord Jesus, from today, I ask you to use me as your agent here on earth. Use my mouth, use my hands, use my leg to preach, to go for you, to reach out to nations. Use me at every given time. Today, I receive power from on high to witness for you. Jesus, lay your invisible hands on my tongue and release my tongue to preach the gospel wherever men may be found. In the name of Jesus, I receive power. I receive power to go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I receive power in the name of Jesus. Okay, let me just pray for you. Father, I pray for your people today. The Bible says in the book of John, 20 verse 21, you breathe on them and you say, receive the Holy Spirit. And then you send them out. I breathe on you now in line with the book of John 20 verse 21. Receive power. Be a witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Receive. Receive greater grace to preach the gospel in the name of Jesus. May God make you uncomfortable wherever there is sinners. From today, may you become uncomfortable wherever there are sinners. May God always move your heart. May you always have a rumbling in your stomach to preach the word of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let it just shout. Amen. Go back to your chair. Thank you for coming. Amen.